Steve hated this guy at Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> this is the way that a phone had to behave. Steve saw it, put the tablet on hold. Let's build a phone. There are many origins where iPhone came from. Apple Computer did it by selling 93 million iPhones last year. Every once in a while, a revolutionary product comes along. Was it a touchscreen tablet project? And we've been working on a tablet project. A late night email. <laughs> an iPod. Everyone was starting to carry phone, and you try to put music on your phone. Or was it something else? An iPod, a phone, and an internet communicator. Where did the iconic phone come from? Everyone around us had phones. Everyone was complaining about their phones. Could we build something better? Are you getting it? Here's a theory that looks very credible. The tablet project was known as Q79. It was an experimental early step at an iPad-like device uh, that interface designers like Bass Orton and Imran Chaduri were working on. Uh, they were exploring the basics of the interface, they were doing the demos, prototyping, all of that. But it was too expensive to produce, it was difficult, and it didn't really get past the research phase. Steve Jobs, though, he famously did not want to do a phone for months because you had to work with the carriers and at that time they had immense amount of power and control and then you had to pass all these regulations to uh, bring the headset on market to market. But it all changed with one email. On November 7, 2004, Mike Bell, Apple's veteran, he emailed Steve Jobs saying, Steve, I know you don't want to do a phone, but here's why we should do it. Johnny Ive has some really cool designs for future iPods that no one has seen. We ought to take one of those, put some Apple software around it, and make a phone out of it ourselves instead of putting our stuff on other people's phones. Before spending 15 years at Apple, Bell worked on Motorola's wireless division, and he was convinced that computers, music players, and cell phones were coming to this crossover point, especially when the new batch of cell phones was released and they all had these MP3 functionality built in that was closely getting to iPod. And then just three days later, after hit and sent on that email, and after months of basically bent in Steve Jobs' ear, Mike Bell, Johnny Ive, and Steve Suckerman, they finally sat down for lunch with the man himself and this is when the iPhone project was officially kicked off. So fast forward a few months, Apple had a ton of prototypes and two iPhone projects going head to head. One on one side was Tony Fidel, the guy who brought us the iPod. And the other one was Scott Forstall, who was the mastermind behind Mac OS. And then Steve Jobs made a decision what he wanted to do. He goes and calls UIWiz, Bass Orton, who was working on a tablet, and he says, it's going to have a small screen, it's going to be just a touch screen, there's not going to be any buttons, and everything has to work on that. <laughs> Classic Steve Jobs. It's like, hey, go and shrink this massive thing that you've been prototyping that wasn't even usable for the tablet, shrink it into a tiny 3.5-inch screen, and fast and show me the demo. These small details, which we now take for granted, like inertia scrolling, that effect that makes scrolling down your contact list feel satisfyingly tactile, those names that fly by in a burst after you swipe down, that all ha didn't exist. It actually was the product of exhaustive tinkering and proof of concept experiment. iPhone project had a crazy deadlines, Steve Jobs style. For example, the original design of the icons on the phone was actually made in one night. Imran Chaduri and Freddy Anzurs, who was the recent hire, these guys from Human Interface team, they basically pulled an all-nighter and then came up with icons of with those boxy designs that you know and love today. And multi-touch demos were promising that the style was coming together, but the team lacked cohesion. It was just a, a few ideas here and a few ideas there. It was like tapas, little fragments. And um, Steve Jobs wanted a steak dinner. He was getting super frustrated seeing just incompleted things on the phone, in the phone's experience. And he goes and says, look, you have two weeks to come up with a full story for the iPhone. Otherwise, I'm pulling the plug. This was February 2005. The team was led by Apple's engineer, Greg Christie, and they went and kicked off this two-week death march. Basically went to mattresses, and then every designer had was given a fragment to realize um, an app to work on. And then after they came all back, they're doing the demo. Later, Christie recalled that anyone who have seen would, would have seen that demo in February 2005 would have no problem recognizing that this was the iPhone. And when Steve saw it, he basically wanted to see it the second time because it was an absolute massive success. And then later, immediately, actually, that project was labeled as top secret. Badge readers were installed. That's how it started. 
Was it down to that Microsoft guy that Steve hated? Well, it is hard to say, admittedly, but the question you might be asking is, was, what was Microsoft doing at that time when iPhone was being developed? In 2006, in their letter to shareholders, Microsoft said that they are preparing the most important series of product releases in Microsoft history, the notorious Windows Vista, the 2007 Microsoft Office system and Exchange Server, 2007. How exciting and how can we forget the legendary uh, reaction to the first iPhone from the Microsoft CEO, Steve Ballmer. <laughs> $500 fully subsidized with a plan? I said, that is the most expensive phone in the world and it doesn't appeal to business customers because it doesn't have a keyboard, which makes it not a very good email machine. As a uh, iPhone later became the most successful consumer device ever made, um, Balmer actually had an interview with Charlie Rose in 2014 and Charlie asked him, what were your biggest regrets? Uh, this is what he had to say. Come on, Charlie, I probably would have started us doing hardware earlier so that really? we could have been yeah. more effective in the phone business. Yeah. I mean, this is kind of like an IQ test. Should Microsoft have a position in the phone business? Yes. And this is the story where iPhone came from. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Consider liking it and adding a sub to the channel for similar videos like that. And I'll see you as always in the next one.